my name is Mario Lora, and I am The Bachelor. <laughs> Throughout my life, I have been blessed to know four very lucky ladies. They have stuck with me through thick and thin. They have seen the best and worst sides of me, and have seen me grow from a boy to a man. <laughs> this first rose would have to go to Jackie. Jackie, do you accept this rose? <laughs> Jackie was the first. I scored my first goal with her. All I remember was my team in Roberto passing me the ball, and I didn't know what to do with it, so I shot it. I felt the sense of euphoria, and I couldn't believe my eyes. This next rose would have to go to Sasha. <laughs> Sasha, do you accept this rose? After Jackie broke, <laughs> it took me time to get adjusted to a new stick. But after a couple games, I scored again, and we discovered the spark in our relationship. <laughs> the next rose would have to go to Bertha. <laughs> Bertha, do you accept this rose? I'm not gonna lie, after a while, I got kind of tired of Sasha. And I needed something stronger, something better, something that would be there for me at times, in the dark times. Then she would never give up on me. But at the same time, I was seeing a lot more other sticks. And then I found the perfect one. And this last rose would have to go to Jackie 2.0. Jackie 2.0, do you accept this rose? She was perfect. She was beautiful. She was a goddess. She was everything I could ask for. At first, I was skeptical about it, because she was something that I just wasn't used to. But she pulled through, and she helped me rip shots, passes would come out good, and I would score a lot of goals. She was the one for me. Now, it may seem ridiculous that I name my lacrosse sticks. After all, they are not women, but I love them because I love this sport. And that is really the point of today's talk. Good afternoon, students, esteemed staff, and Director Riverall. And welcome to my senior talk on sportsmanship. Many people are born with talents, but mine came later in life. I remember when one of my friends was telling me that the lacrosse team needed players. And at first, I was skeptical about it because I wasn't familiar with the sport. But when I went home, I looked up some lacrosse games and thought, hmm, it was actually appealing and interesting. Nothing of what I first expected. So the next day, I carried on and went to lacrosse practice. The first few days were beyond monotonous. I couldn't catch, I couldn't shoot, and I couldn't do anything of the sort. But something made me stay. I don't know what it was, and I don't know if I will ever know what it is. But I know that my first game cleared it all up for me. All I remember was my first goal, and I knew that lacrosse was for me. Lacrosse is a sport where there are 20 people on the field. First, there's a goalie, defenseman, 
midfield, and attack. Lacrosse is such a unique sport because it starts with the face-off. And also, fun fact, everyone carries their own handle stick. Fundraising was an important factor to keep lacrosse here at school. Because in order for you to play lacrosse, you need gloves, elbow pads, chest pads, and helmets. And honestly, that comes out pretty pricey. But me and Mr. Young decided to fundraise for them. Because I can't keep my legacy here without lacrosse here. One day, me and my lacrosse coach, Mr. Young, decided to coach middle school students lacrosse. And at first, honestly, it was only about skill. But one day, I encountered unsportsmanlike conduct. And I wanted to take my senior talk to a whole nother level. And I wanted to teach these middle school students great sportsmanship. What is great sportsmanship, you might ask? Great sportsmanship is full commitment to participation, respect to the sport and its members, and being a good team player. This notion was ingrained in my mind since I was a seventh grader here at Gompers Preparatory Academy. Since then, I have learned that if you win, you don't brag. And if you lose, you don't show anger. Before I carry on, here is a video of why I have done these past six months. Enjoy. of sportsmanship in sports? No, not really. Not really? Well, have you heard of the rule called if you, lo if you win, don't brag, if you lose, don't show anger? Yeah. Um, you guys should really try to incorporate that in your life because when you play sports, in order for you to be the complete athlete, you need to have great character. So say whenever you're playing and you lose, always try to try your best to say, oh, good game or something. Or the, there's always, it's always going to be important for you to show great character. Because you don't want to be that one guy that, that's all mean to everyone because they lost. You know, in order for you to grow as an athlete, you need to grow your character. So you can't, do you consider yourself a great athlete? Yes, always. <laughs> do you think you think you have good character? Uh, what? No. I say, I say good game after. No, not really. I don't. They just say good job. It's a different track. Well, I just encourage you guys to bring to use that in your life. Here, I am teaching these two middle school students how to face off. But more importantly, I am teaching them how to encounter unsportsmanlike conduct when they face off. Because whenever I would face off, I would encounter this, and I don't want them to go through the same thing I did. Here, I am being a good role model for these students. But more importantly, I am teaching them the importance of being a great athlete. I always felt like there was a hole. A hole in what moral, you might ask? Besides playing this wonderful sport, there was always unsportsmanlike conduct. Someone would always tell me something that made me feel like I didn't belong in the sport, like I shouldn't be on the field, like I wasn't human. Who here has heard of John Wooden? The famous basketball coach who coached UCLA and won 10 NCAA national championships and was a powerhouse of complete athletes. He created the John Wooden Pyramid of Success that had many exemplary ideas, such as industriousness, loyalty, poise, and skill. I carry the same conviction he does. I want to build wonderful human beings. Competitive greatness means to have love for the struggle. Because no one has ever been successful without a little struggle. 
Michael Jordan once said, I failed over and over and over again, and that is why I succeed. I'm not afraid of failure, and that is what makes me successful. This is here to show you that you shouldn't be afraid of failing. Even the considered best basketball player failed over and over again, with me myself included. I recently injured my hamstring, and I couldn't play the one sport I loved for two months. But Nurse Canty gave me some workouts, and eventually I got better. And the virtues it taught me, which are hard work and perseverance, is what I want to teach the middle school students and our youth, so I can watch them prosper in ways that we never thought possible. I believe that confidence is something that many people lack. Have you ever been afraid of taking that game-winning shot, whether it was during practice or during a game? I am here to tell you to be confident and take that shot. I want all of you to think back to a time where you had unsportsmanlike conduct. Did you like how you acted? I would like to remind you that unsportsmanlike conduct doesn't only tie back to sports. It can tie back to your daily activities, such as school, work, and friendships. I personally have also acted impulsively in situations where I shouldn't have. But today, I want all of you to walk away with these three skills, which are to be humble, have self-control, and have loyalty towards your ethics. I believe that if you've used these three skills in your daily life, you will become a better person. Last weekend, I took my loved ones to the park. And no, this time I am not talking about my lacrosse sticks. <laughs> I took my loved ones to learn how to, teach, how to play lacrosse. I taught them how to catch, how to cradle, how to shoot, and basically the fundamentals. I am grateful for having lacrosse in my life. Because lacrosse has been there for me, but no one else was it. It was the light at the end of the tunnel. I don't know if my siblings will choose lacrosse, but I do know that the virtues it has taught them, which are hard work, perseverance, and respect, will pave that way. And I want all of you to walk away with those skills. Thank you, and that concludes my senior talk.